Today we're going to talk about energy. Now everyone seems to have their own idea of what energy is. Energy, the term energy, seems to be a little bit elusive. You have potential energy and kinetic energy and chemical energy and and light energy and um, energy, the term energy seems to be used quite a bit but there seems to be no cohesive um, definition of what energy is. So I'm going to do this very simply. I'm not going to do any fancy graphics. Uh, I'm just going to use uh, unit analysis as uh, a way of um, trying to elucid um, the true definition of what energy is. So I say modified unit analysis, but really this is just standard unit analysis. I'm just modifying the way that unit analysis is, is used. So I'm going to use the unit analysis to try to um, to um, try to explain what energy is. So in this discussion, I'm going to make an assumption, and I think almost everyone will agree with me that the assumption here is that everything is in motion. All of the objects are in the universe are in motion. There is no such thing as an object that is not moving. An object might not be moving relative to me, like my microphone here is not moving relative to me, which is a good thing because then my voice would start sounding like this. So things appear to be still, but we know that the earth is in motion and the, you know, the planets, all the planets are in motion relative to each other. So let's make this assumption that everything is in motion. So here's my simple example. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's say we have two billiard balls. Let's call them A and B. And billiard ball A is in motion, and billiard, billiard ball B is also in motion. Billiard ball A is moving towards billiard ball B. And these little arrows here show that um, billiard ball A is moving faster. So this little graphic here means that it's moving towards billiard ball B faster than B is moving away from A. So obviously in this case, A is eventually going to run into B. Even though B is moving and A is moving, um, eventually they will meet. Okay, so uh, the unit, so because billiard ball A is in motion and billiard ball B is in motion, they both have what's called momentum. And the units of momentum are kilograms, meters per second. So both billiard ball A and B have the units of momentum. So in B, I just wrote it backwards because uh, I'll explain later why I wrote it backwards, but I just wrote it backwards just to create a kind of a symmetry um, between the units, and this will make more sense later on. Okay, so let's say A, billiard ball A, has a velocity of uh, 1.00001 meters per second. So it's basically one meter per second and a tiny bit more. And let's say billiard ball B is moving at 0 0.00001 meters per second. So it is moving much slower, which is why we have the small arrow here. It is moving much slower than billiard ball A. Okay, so, so um, but it's not convenient to have two things moving. When you're doing an experiment, you want to fix something and have something else moving. So next we're going to calibrate uh, to the reference frame of B. So we're going to pretend that B is not moving. Okay, so, um, so basically the way we do this is we take the speed of billiard ball B and we, we make that zero. So we say, okay, B is not moving. B is not moving. Okay, we call that stillness. We call that the rest frame. We call that the reference frame. So this is going to be our reference frame. And um, so we're going to subtract 0 0.00001 from B, which means we have to subtract 0 0.0001 from A. 
So now A, in, in this new reference frame, A is moving 1.00000 meters per second, and B is moving 0 0.00000 meters per second um, in this reference frame. So that's basically relativity, okay? That's relativity uh, before, you know, when we're not moving close to the speed of light. So this is really uh, how relativity works. You want to fix a reference frame, and then you want to measure the other object relative to that reference frame. So that's, that's pretty standard stuff, but um, this helps, will help with the logic of um, trying to figure out what energy is. Okay, so, um, so now we're going to put the kilogram back into the unit. So now I was only showing the units of meters per second. Sorry about that. Uh, so now we're going to put it, um, the units back in. So um, A, billiard ball A, has, uh, and this is a new terminology that I'm developing for my modified unit analysis uh, approach. Um, the, the, a new common language, I guess maybe you could call it. I'm trying to develop a common language, and I want to associate the words kinetic and potential with inertia. In standard physics, uh, you hear about kinetic energy and potential energy, and it's really, nobody really has a good idea of what that means. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing the kinetic and um, potential terms down to the level of inertia. Okay, so, um, so we can say here that relative to B, billiard ball B, um, A has kinetic inertia. Okay, so uh, momentum is a form of inertia. An object in motion remains in motion unless acted upon by an external source. So that is, uh, that's one of Newton's laws. Okay, potential inertia, which I sometimes call stillness inertia, is really still momentum with a velocity of, of zero but it's only a velocity of zero because we calibrated that to be the reference frame. So it is in fact moving, it still has momentum, but it is not moving relative to A. So uh, just because it has a velocity of zero does not mean you get to wipe out the units of velocity, okay? It is still moving, it still has a velocity, it has a velocity of zero relative to A. So B still has inertia, but relative to A, it has potential inertia, stillness inertia. It is not moving. And the one that is moving relative to A, I say it has kinetic inertia. So instead of kinetic and potential energy, I say kinetic and potential inertia. Right? It's just a, a slight difference, but I'm pushing back the kinetic and potential terms to the level of momentum, to the level of momentum, which I refer to as which is a form of inertia. An object in motion remains in motion, or an object in stillness remains in stillness. So that is uh, the concept of inertia. Inertia is resistance to change. So let's move on here. So both A and B still have the units of momentum, kilograms, meters per second, even though B has a calibrated velocity of zero. Okay, so now we're gonna let billiard ball A crash into billiard ball B. So now, and we know what happens there. When you hit a billiard ball and it moves towards the other ball and it hits the other ball, the other ball starts moving and the, the moving ball stops moving. So B will start moving and A will stop moving. So I'm gonna do this in unit analysis. So I'm gonna take um, a, and I'm going to move it close to, and I'm going to have it just touch B, okay? And I'm doing this with units, so here are the units of A, and here are the units of B, and you can see that I wrote B backwards, just, you know, it creates kind of a nice symmetry, and this will be important in, in a minute. So, here, it's only when the units touch, it's only when the units come into contact that you get an energy transfer between the two balls. Okay, so 
the but in reality what's going on is the momentum the kinetic inertia the kinetic inertia momentum of a is being transferred to b and and the the potential inertia for b is being transferred to a so we often forget we think a billiard ball, ball hits and, and one stops and one starts we say oh the momentum was transferred to to b but energy transfer is a two-way street okay the momentum transfer the momentum from a was transferred to b and the momentum of b the, sl the slowness is is transferred or the stillness is transferred to a so energy transfer or mo sorry momentum transfer is a two-way street so it's not just one's hitting the other and the other one's moving it's one's hitting the other and the other one's moving and now this one is still its potential so um, there's an so what I say here is there's an energy transfer between the two balls okay and now you'll see why I wrote the units this way because when just at the moment when they're about to hit you can see that you've got these units here in the middle you've got these units here in the middle meters per second meters per second okay these are well known as the units for emission and absorption okay emission and absorption of what we call energy but we still don't know what energy is okay emission and absorption of what so when a hits b is is it emitting its momentum and when b gets hit by a is it absorbing its momentum what is it emitting and what is it absorbing emission and absorption may not be the best terms for the best term for energy transfer but that's basic that's the standard language and so i'll stick with the st standard language that these are the units of emission and absorption okay so uh, to recap meters per second meters per second are the units of emission and absorption and those are also the units of the uh, speed of light squared okay c squared has the units of emission and absorption and that's a big clue as to you know what energy is okay so in reality what was transferred in this in this situation was the velocity okay so the velocity of a the velocity of a was transferred to b and the velocity of b was transferred to a okay velocity is a transfer velocity transfer is a two-way street so you know velocity was transferred momentum changed but we still do so and what is energy we still don't know what energy is okay a transferred its fast velocity to b and b transferred its slow velocity to a okay here's what here's what we have right here so uh a a went to b and b went to a and in the middle we had a transfer an emission and absorption so um a emitted its velocity to b and b admitted its velocity to a so it's so b absorbed whatever momentum a had in a absorbed whatever momentum b had so um so that's that's basically what's going on um energy you know again where does energy fit into this scenario so here's what i want you to pay attention to notice that the units for energy can be grouped with a so that's this is why i wrote b backwards than a so then you can clearly see that the energy we could either group with B in this scenario. Okay, so we could either group the energy with B or energy can be grouped, the units of energy can be grouped with B. So either A or B, but not both at the same time. Okay, so what does this tell us? What does this tell us? This tells me 
what this means to me is that energy is a transient. Now we know a little bit about transients because um, in Steinmetz's book, the, the word transient is in the title. So he's basically talking about transients. And so the conclusion I came to by doing this kind of thought experiment is that energy is a transient. It's temporary. Energy is, okay, is a transfer. And transfer can only happen in the moment. Okay? Energy exists only at the moment of transfer between two objects with mass. Okay? Energy only exists in the moment of transfer, of emission and of absorption. Emission and absorption. So that's why there's so many forms of energy because energy is a transient, it's temporary. So there are many ways that um, momentum can be transferred between objects. And really that's what's going on. Under the hood, all energy is, is, a, is a momentum transfer, really. And all forces are, forces are the action that cause um, momentum to change. And that's what work is. Work is when you, when something's not moving and you make it move, or when something is moving and you stop it from moving. And um, energy transfer cannot be continuous. It cannot go on forever, whereas momentum can. If I throw a ball out in space, it's gonna, the object in motion remains in motion. It's going to remain in motion forever unless it runs into a wall or another planet or another ball. So momentum is the permanent condition. Okay? It's either moving fast or moving slow or not moving at all relative to something else. And energy trans transfer is a transient. You cannot transfer energy forever. And energy cannot be transferred forever. Even if you have a battery, eventually the battery is going to run out of fuel and you're not going to be able to do an energy transfer anymore. So I hope, I hope this uh, clears things up a bit regarding what is energy. Um, energy, there's kinetic energy and potential energy and, and chemical energy and, and light energy and all kinds of energy. But really, energy is the moment of transfer. Energy is a transfer, it's a transient, um, and it is not a thing in of itself. Okay, if, if there were no masses, if there were no masses in the universe, there could be no energy transfer because you wouldn't have something to transfer to and you wouldn't have something to transfer from. You need mass, that's why mass is in the units of energy. Okay, you need a quantity of matter. Okay, I define mass as a quantity of matter. You need a quantity of matter of atoms in order, or electrons, uh, in order to um, have the experience of energy transfer. So um, there, I'm going to leave it at that. I, we talked a little bit about relativity. Hopefully I gave you a, a better understanding of what energy is. And, you know, hopefully this will help you uh, in your thinking about how the universe works. Uh, have a lovely day.